Hello everyone. In this session, we're going to understand dimensionality reduction, shortly abbreviated as DR. So I'm going to use DR as it is very hard for me to pronounce dimension plus lity, right? So what is DR? It is the process of reducing the dimension of our feature set or feature space. So what do you mean by feature space? Well, basically feature space is, it could be a data set consisting of 100 rows and 100 columns or it could be RF points. It can be anything which is there in the data set. So I can represent these, this data set in, in a larger space, okay? In a larger space in the form of sphere. So if I'm using, uh, if I'm using for visualization purpose, if I'm using this 100 rows and 100 columns with the help of this 3D structure as large sphere, then my DR is going to do what? Is going to reduce the dimension from this sphere so that this sphere converted into the circle. So what I'm saying is I'm reducing from higher dimension to a lower dimensions. Okay, so you can see here if I have a data set looks like this, if this is my data set. <coughs> then for visualization purpose, I need to I need to visualize this complete data set which is which consists of n cross n. Uh, I want to I want to visualize this then I can use something called as 3d structure, right? So for 3d I'm using sphere. So all these numeric values the the data points I'm, I'm putting it in inside this sphere Okay, and DR what DR is going to do is it converts or it reduces the dimension from the sphere So that this 3d structure converted into or reduces reduces it to 2d structure I mean to say from sphere to circle. This is what I want in DR <coughs> So how can you do that and, and why basically I, why do we need this dimensional reduction? Well, the intention is if you are having a huge data set, so if you are having a huge data set, let's say it consists of n cross n, then what will happen? Uh, well, basically if your n cross n uh, data set is there, then definitely it is having more number of feature. <coughs> Uh, more number of feature so if you are having more number of feature then the model that you are creating is going to be very complex is going to be more complex okay and if your if there is if there are a more number of feature then there is a slight problem to model it and what is the problem is the problem is it will create an overfit model and you precisely know why this happens well this happens because you know that overfit model looks like this if I have a data set uh, like this you had seen in the uh, linear regression what will happen is I will draw a line which is going to be like look like this it will, it will try to cover up all these data points and this this is an overfit model it is having the high variance and because of this high variance I have the overfit model it will try to cover up all these data points um, and it will generate an overfit model okay it learns from all the data set from the from all the data points but the problem is it will create an overfit model and I don't need this overfit model right <clears throat> because it is high high variancy there and uh, uh, what will happen inside the inside the model it will learn too much that will not give you the uh, I mean it will always give you the good accuracy always there is no negative result in your data set <clears throat> and I don't need that because I need a result which consists of uh, I mean good result uh, I mean good accuracy and also the bad accuracy according to the data set I need that kind of result right I don't need the best result I need a very average result uh, that that consists of positive plus negative cases however this overfit model will give you only positive cases always best result I don't need it right so that's why if you are having huge data set and if, if there are more number of features then to to use that uh, what will happen is the model is going to be very complex to understand. Beside this, it will generate an overfit model and I don't need it, right? And that is the reason we are converting this higher dimension uh, to a lower dimension with the help of DR, <coughs> okay? 
So the first thing that we're gonna do in DR is we will reduce and we will try to analyze and how to reduce a data from 2D to 1D. And by the way, this whole thing is from N to NG. So I'm thankful uh, for the for all these notes and the nice ended concepts. Okay. <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna understand is how we can you know uh, reduce this two dimension data to one dimension. So now if you're having a graph looks like this, having x1 here and x2 here, and my and my data uh, looks like this. Okay. So in linear regression, you know that I need a best fit line, and what I'm gonna do is I'll I'll create a a feature space. So this is the feature space. Okay. So if I have this line, then what will happen is I need to project these these data point to this line. I need to project it. And how you can project it? Well, basically you need a perpendicular line from the from this line to this data point. You will project it. This is already there. You will project here, and you will. This is already there in the uh, to the line. Okay. <coughs> So you are projecting your data point to this line and you try to minimize this minimize this distance so that you get uh, you know um, so that you, you got some reduction in your uh, dimension and by means of projection you understand it projection is nothing but in the data set uh, if, if x1 is 0.5 and let's say x2 is like uh, 0.9 and if x3 is going to be like uh, 1.2 then what will happen is uh, <clears throat> this x2 is basically very near to 1 okay and this x3 is also very near to 1 so what will happen is this if if this is if this cross is let's say this cross is let's say x2 okay and the point that is there very near to this line is let's say x3 and you can see x2 is 0.9 and x3 is uh, 1.2 then what what i what i want what i want to say for project projection is basically is that i can take this x3 here instead of x2 i'm, I'm just projecting it okay so i'm, I'm converting this 0.9 to 1 uh, and i'm seeing this 1.2 as equal to i'm sorry approximately equals to one so what i'm do, what i'm doing is instead of using x2 i'm using x3 now okay so so what is happening over here is uh, from the from the independent variable i mean these x1 x2 x3 are, are i mean it, they are independent variable so i'm creating new independent variable here so this x2 is my old independent variable here this is my old independent variable and this x3 is going to be my new independent variable i am projecting this x2 to x3 because their values are same so i can use that right and the, their values are very nearby so that's why i'm using x3 here okay just for you know just for to get an idea on projection i'm just explaining you in this way it is not happening in real in, in in real scenarios however just to understand projection it is nothing but you are taking the nearby data point which is very near to the older independent variable so if x2 is 0.9 and is equal to 1 and if x3 is 1.2 then it is also equals to 1 so so i'm projecting my x2 to x3 so now x3 is going to be you know represent x2 only okay so the projection meaning is, is like that and the intention is now the this is in 2d i want to convert this in 1d so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this line I'm going to take this line and I will say these these points I'll take these points and draw it over here so this is so let's say if this is uh, let's say this th this is x1 this is x2 uh, let's say this is uh, let me take it as this is x4 this is x2 and this is x3 already and this is x4 Okay, so what will happen is this is my x1 here, x2 here, x3 here, and x4 here. And you can see this line is in is in 1D. 
okay so initially it is there in the 2d dimensions however now it is converted into uh, one dimension and i will not uh, i will not use this x1 x2 and x3 and x4 i'll use instead z1 z2 z3 and z4 instead of using uh, x1 x2 so what will happen is if my x1 belongs to a uh, two dimension okay now because of this projection because of this projection it is now in the one dimension so initially initial it is in the two dimension now it is it is reduced to one dimension in the same way i can write it for x2 that belongs to <coughs> two dimension now because of the projection it is converted into or you can say it is reduced to uh, one dimension the same way you can write for x4 <coughs> For the projection, this is my, okay. So you're getting it. So initially, it is there in the uh, in the two dimension. Now it is being converted into a one dimension. And what will happen uh, if I do that? Well, you can you can have an idea over here. So I'm going to just scroll it a little. So what will happen is because of this uh, 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 reduction, what will happen is you will you will reduces it reduces the memory space and you can easily understand it right you can see it, earlier it is using two dimensions that and because of that reason it uses more number of features now i am uh, you know reducing it to one dimension for one day only so i'm i'm, I'm using uh, uh, i'm using a very little memory uh, from the from the computer okay and based on if you are using less memory then definitely the second advantage is it runs quickly okay these are the two things that happen if you reduce the dimension of the data set <coughs> one is it, redu it reduces the memory space as you're dealing from uh, higher dimension to lower dimension you're reducing it and the second advantage is it runs quickly okay now the second scenario is you are converting or you are reducing you are reducing 3d reducing your data uh, let me just reduce data from 3d to 2d how you can do that well basically if you are having i'll try to draw it so if you are having uh, like this, uh, so this is 3D, this is going to be my X1, X2 and uh, this is X3 and uh, for data point I am going to take another color. So, so if these are the, if these are the my, if these are my data points, I hope you can see this. So all these are data points in three dimension. They are not counter lines. Uh, they are just uh, randomly scattered here and there in three dimension. Okay. I want to convert this whole thing into the uh, three dimensions. Sorry, in two dimension. So well, how can you do that? Well, uh, I will write it over here that my xi initially it belongs to three dimension, and I want it to convert into the two dimension so what you can do is uh, you can take one plane over here it's like a it's a 2d plane so it's it's actually a plane just a plane the, this is the plane and you are just you know slightly you are just moving it uh, slightly you are moving it for the 2d so now i'm i'm i'm, I'm just changing this graph to I'm projecting it, project it in 2D. So what will happen is I'm going to draw it again. So 
so now what will happen is uh, these so i'm going to i'm going to tilt this plane a little so now this is the uh, I, I cannot draw it but this is the tilted version of this 2d plane okay so now in, initially here there are three three dimension to to show this three dimension we having x1 x2 and x3 and i plotted two dimension uh, see, sorry 2d plan i tilt it a little and this is original x3 x1 and x2 but now uh, the the data point which is there inside this 2d plane uh, happen is i need here two dimensions okay basically i need two dimension to to see these data points so i need another two dimensions so these are my two dimension i can represent this dimension as z1 and z2 okay these are my extra two dimension not extra but th these are the two dimension by by which i can see this 2d plane and when i take this out when i take this out 2d plane i can show it in in this way and i can have these these all data point sites over here and so this is the graph for z2 and z1 okay so initially your here initially your xi belongs to three dimension but with the help of projection you know now you are representing this in the form of z of i and it belongs to two dimension this is what we are seeing inside this topic so this is your dimensional reduction and we precisely had seen how to convert this uh, 3d to 2d and you can see this whole z it is consist of here we have two uh, z because we are dealing with two dimensions that, that's why the z is the vector space z is a 2d vector space okay i hope you are getting it so this is your dimensional direction and we precisely use to reduce the dimension from data set so that we, we get fewer relationship and the model becomes simpler and easy to understand and we uh, uh, we we ignore the fact that we have overfit model okay we convert the overfit model to a good model with the help of reducing our dimensions and so this is the uh, the complete set or the complete idea on dimensional direction and you have a varieties of application to do that we have uh, we have principal component analysis pca that is the that is our next topic that you can see where we can apply the the same thing this feature uh, extraction and uh, we will see how to reduce the dimension uh, from a higher dimension to lower dimension with the help of pca now uh, tr can be you know it is it, it can be as i told you that how can i how can i use this tr how what are the various methodologies by which i can apply it so there are three method, method actually there are two methodologies one is linear method and the another one is non-linear method method we are dealing with linear methods over here so this is your linear method okay so this linear method consists of first one is principal component analysis this is principal component analysis this is pca okay that I, as i told you and you can take this uh, you can have a look on this uh, on this topic in my next uh, you know video um, uh, so i'll not elaborate this pca uh, all over here in this video you can check it out that video where i explain you what is principal component analysis so Please go through that, refer the next video, okay? Refer the next video on PCA. So this is done. The next thing is we can use something called as factor analysis. Okay, we have this topic factor analysis by which we can use, uh, by which we can reduce the dimensionality and how it can be used. So it's factor analysis says that uh, you know you're having something called as observed variable. Now let, let's say there are there are some set of variable which are which look similar. They have the same similar characteristic, 
So instead of using five different names for the similar characteristic, I'm using one, one specific name for that. Okay, that your factor analysis will give you. So what it says, it says that it used it used to reduce a large number of it used to reduce a large number of variable into fewer number as I told you fewer number of factors so what it means it means that if the variables are having the same characteristic if five variables are having the same characteristic then I will not use five different name five, I will not use five features okay instead of that I will use one feature to represent that five feature so if let's say if let's say I have um, uh, length okay and I have width okay in the data set let's say uh, all other columns are like this so if I have length and width in the data set so instead of using two different feature what I'm gonna do I'll simply say area equals to length cross width so now instead of using two different features what I'm gonna do I'll simply use one feature only so instead of that what I'm gonna do I'll use simply area can you understand so this exact thing factor analysis will give you okay so I'll write it here so the example is from one website so I'm just uh, putting those example here so if I have observed variables and the factors I'll represent over here and let's say observe observe uh, variables uh, looks like this if I have uh, let's say let me just change this uh, let's say I have taste of food this is one feature other thing is let's say I have food temperature food temperature I'll also say freshness of food okay and you can precisely see that these are having the similar characteristic of food okay uh, it represent the food so in general what we are dealing with we are dealing with one factor one specific feature and that feature name is food quality so you, you have to take one uh, equation or you can say one expression by which you can you know represent these three observed variable into one so I'm using that one variable as food quality so instead of using three different feature what I'm using here only one feature okay this is this exact thing will give you uh, uh, it can be done with the help of factor analysis okay and the third and the last most thing in the linear method for dimensionality reduction it is the LDA and I'll say linear discriminant analysis shortly abbreviated as LDA so what it says it 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 is it looks like this so you can put the uh, you can put the uh, you know same data points we are having the similar characteristic into one uh, I, I shouldn't say cluster but you can put all those data points who, are, who possessing the similar characteristic into one bunch so if this is one bunch then I am putting those crosses over here because these crosses represent the similar characteristic another bunch is for these round shaped you know points who are having the similar characteristic so yeah, this is it look it's something like this in the in, in general so this is my ld1 and this this set here this is the complete thing this is my ld2 okay so what is it i'll what is the definition i'm going to change the color again and so what lda says uh, <clears throat> It projects the data it projects the data in a way that class projects the data 
and that is class separability is maximized okay so your class separate separability gets maximized so we are we are projecting the data in a way that the similar characteristic data uh, get into the one bunch in the um, and um, there must be a proper separate separability between two bunches okay that is we can see over here this is ld1 and ld2 and you can see there are two different classes okay and having the a uh, different different characteristic but inside one bunch they are having the similar characteristic uh, examples from same class put close together so i'll write it uh, i'll write it down here examples of same class so these cross are the examples of same class and examples of same class put together put together by the projection and as i told you the projection means uh, as i told you x1 is having 0.9 and x2 is let's say 1.1 uh, .1, then both are very near to 1 so I'm putting these x1 and x2 into one bunch. Okay, this is the uh, this is the thing that LDA do. And the other thing is the opposite that different classes are. So uh, if I have a space here, so I'll write it down here. Different classes are so examples of different classes are placed far apart by the projection. Okay, so this is the thing that we had uh, that we had seen in the dimensionality. These are the these are the three methods. These are the three linear method by which you can use DR. Okay, so principal component analysis, factor analysis, and we have linear discriminant analysis. Okay, these are the three methods by which we can uh, use a DR. We can reduce the dimension from higher dimension to uh, lower dimension. Apart from that, also uh, as I told you for the for the projection. So uh, again, I'm I'm just want to conclude something. So if these are the data points, and uh, and if this is the line, then what is the thing that you do in the DR? Well, basically, if this is the graph. So if this is the graph, then you draw a line like this to have your projections. Okay. So if this is the projection, then uh, what will happen is. Uh, so you are taking this point so I'll, I'll, these round shaped are going to be the projected data okay cross and round shaped cross and round so here cross x, x or you can say the cross represents actual data however the cross with circle is going to be projection of actual data okay so this is what you are seeing here and uh, this is the best projection why this is the best this is the best projection why this is the best projection because the errors are minimum this is the minimum distance this is also uh, you have to take care that you have minimum distance between the actual data and the projection of the data and how can you okay how can you take the minimized data as i told you you take so if this is 0.9 again and if this is 1.1 you are taking very nearby values okay you are taking very nearby values and that's why the uh, if i want to if i want to project uh, x x1 as uh, sorry if i want to project x1 as actual data and x2 as projected data uh, this can be done because they are very near to each other and that's why there is there is minimum error in between these two points and that's why i'm taking it Okay, and that is why the this is the best projection line. However, uh, if you if the cases are somehow changed, and if you draw something like this, if this is the, the this is the line, then what will happen? The perpendicular to this line is is going to be this point, and uh, for this, this is the point, this is the point here, and this is the point, and uh, yeah, for this. This is the point. So these are the new projections. 
However, you can see the distance here. This distance is huge and that's why the error is going to be very high and that is the reason this line is going to be your worst projection. This is our